When I heard that the Final Fantasy series would be returning to Evil East with 12, I was pretty excited. Once I got to play it though, I was very disappointed. I know a lot of people enjoyed that game, but I found nearly everything about it to be a bit underwhelming. A couple years later I bought an Xbox 360 and a copy of Lost Odyssey, and it felt more like a true Final Fantasy game than the 12th installment in that series. That's because the company that made this game, Mistwalker, features two big names from the classic Final Fantasies, Hironobu Sakaguchi and Nobuo Uematsu. The game starts off with a great opening sequence depicting a war between the armies of Ura and Kent. Several minutes into the skirmish, a giant meteor crashes onto the battlefield, killing nearly everyone in the process. One of the survivors is the main character named Kaim, who you soon discover is an immortal. Outside of the previous battle, Kaim has no memory. Yay, amnesia! Yeah, while it is slightly annoying that they use this overused story mechanic, it was implemented into the plot quite well. After a few events, Kaim is sent to investigate a place called Grand Staff that the Uran Council believes triggered the meteor crash. He is ordered to take two people with him, another immortal called Seth, and my favorite character in the game, Jansen, who is a great source of comic relief throughout the adventure. As you progress through the story, your memories will be slowly unlocked through something called A Thousand Years of Dreams. These dream sequences are short stories from the Immortals' past that can be viewed when sleeping or from the main menu. These little glimpses into the character's past really help to flesh out the Immortals' journey, and some are quite heartbreaking. Combat is the same classic turn-based fare that you're used to, but with a couple of twists. The first being Guard Condition. This uses the hit points of your front row characters to raise a defensive wall for the back row members. As the front line units take damage, the strength of the wall decreases, making your weaker characters in the rear more vulnerable to attacks. The second change is the Aim Ring, which lets you deal additional damage or status effects by timing the release of the right trigger as your character is attacking. Another interesting thing related to combat is the different ways your mortal and immortal characters develop. As your mortal characters level up, they will learn new skills such as stronger magic, status protection, etc. However, the immortals are incapable of this evolution and must learn their abilities by linking with mortals. Once a skill is learned, that immortal can then set it as a permanent skill. This is a really cool system, although I think that abilities are learned way too quickly at the beginning forcing you to hop into the menu and change skill links after just about every battle. Boss battles on disc 1 can be very tough. This is partially because you only have three party members, which is a bit limiting offensively. Another reason why the early boss battles are a challenge is due to the level cap. Each area you explore has a maximum level you can reach. Once you hit that mark, all the enemies in that area will only give you one experience point. I enjoyed this as it encouraged you to use strategy rather than just overpowering everything. Some may not dig it though. While I did enjoy nearly everything about the game, there were a couple of things that I didn't care for. The first is the stealth section. It makes sense from a story perspective, but it's pretty boring and annoying. The second thing happens on disc 3, when you're forced to use only support characters for your party. It sucks. I was kind of disappointed with Uematsu's final boss themes for Final Fantasy 9 and 10. As good as those soundtracks were, especially 9, I found the final boss music to be rather dull for both games. But damn, did he ever nail it with this game's theme, Howl of the Departed. I put this track right up there with One Winged Angel and The Extreme. It's that good.
Lost Odyssey is a fantastic RPG that tries some new things while still remaining true to its classic RPG roots. In my opinion, it's the best RPG of the seventh generation, and I really enjoyed replaying it for this review. If you'd like a copy of this game, it's still pretty affordable at around 15 or 20 bucks. Definitely worth it at that price. And that will do it for this one. As always, I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you next time.